Ladies and gentlemen, g'day, g'day, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Economics Mate, and welcome to another video here in World of Tanks Blitz. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the best tank that you can play for 10 versus 10 game mode. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, keep in mind, I got this idea for a video from the uh, World of Tanks Blitz subreddit uh, community. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and put my two cents in and see what the, the war game or the, the Blitz community has said would be a good idea. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And the very first suggestion that someone suggested for 10 versus 10, the best tank, hands down, is the Like Tractor. <laughs> for those of you who don't know what the Like Tractor is, that's a very old T1 tank that they've since removed from the game, but... I thought it'd just be funny to include that. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we get the Captain Obvious here. It is not a T. Is not, it is not a T5 or T10 tank, and it has been removed. You know, shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. And then you know, I guess the discussion for what is the best tank for for 10 versus 10 really dumbs down to what you enjoy playing the most. Because do keep in mind. This is a fun game mode, in quotation marks. Fun game mode. So obviously the, the stats don't matter. If you win or you lose or whatever, it doesn't really count to your statistics. So I guess any tank would work. I'd, I'd just say probably just have fun. Whatever tank you have most fun in would probably be your best option. We had another person that said, I will, I will go with a high DPM and good armor tank. Mistakes will not be forgiven in turn versus 10 though. Really looking forward to the first games. That's fantastic. I guess high DPM, good armor, something like a Yag Tiger or a Tortoise, for instance, was is, would be perfect for that. Um, a T-110E4 would be pretty nice as well. Grill A-15, albeit doesn't have the best armor, but has fantastic DPM and pen. I guess it works. Maybe something like a, an E-50M or a STB-1 would be fantastic as well. Um, and then we have... Things like, uh, what do you call the Black Prince at T7, which is very interesting. I didn't even expect someone would comment that. But yeah, the Black Prince at T7 is fantastic. It used to be called the Black Wince until they buffed it to smithereens and they made it incredibly, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, interesting. Black Prince, definitely uh, definitely an interesting thing. Auto reloaders like uh, the Kranwagen or the Progetto, again, Perfectly reasonable. I probably go with the Kranwagen more so than the Progetto. The Progetto has slightly been nerfed, um, not so much, but ever so slightly. So it's not as powerful as it used to be. Uh, but I'd probably go something like a TVP if you really want to be. I know TVP is not an auto reload; it's an auto loader. But still, something along those lines. If you want a medium tank with like a multi clip, uh, multi round clip, a TVP would probably be the TVP uh, 50, 51 is a perfect tank for that. But the Kronwagen is incredible in hold down position. So yeah, I'd definitely go with the Kronwagen. The Ho Ri is another fantastic tank for turn 10 versus 10. Um, I would highly recommend if you do have it, uh, and, and some people have been agreeing, yes, the Ho Ri is the best, sit back and support the team and pen anything which runs in front of you. I mean, that's a very good point there. Uh, essentially, most people are just saying like either high DPM tanks as I said, like the Tortoise or high alpha tanks, like the 183 or the uh, Yak Panzer E100. The T95 is fan is another really great option. The T30 is also a beautiful option as well. If you want to sort of just get high damage games and get some decent credits and XP. And then uh, there's some people that are like, oh, Progetto 65 for life. <laughs> or Caro 45 for life. <laughs> or Kran for, for uh, Kranwagen for life. So, I mean... Yeah, it's all a matter of opinion, you know. A lot of people, as I was saying, were basically saying like auto reloaders, like the Carro 45T. The CS63 is pretty good, but I wouldn't suggest playing it in 10 versus 10. I feel like it doesn't really perform as well. It doesn't perform as well. Um, but then it's to some people like light, light tank. So light tank scouting has become more of a skill with each additional player. Staying hidden in the bush, blah, blah, blah. And I'm starting to think, perhaps, this is not <laughs> this is not part of this subreddit. So I'm going to glaze over this. But speaking of light tanks, yeah, light tanks would be a fantastic uh, fantastic option to, to have. Um, 
yeah, I, I, I think my tanks like the Vickers Light, the um, the WZ 132-1, the T100LT, these tanks, like, they marvel. Uh, they, they really do absolutely fantastic. I wouldn't suggest going for the Sheridan Missile, because, I mean, it's just, a, <laughs> it's just annoying at this point. Um, and... And then we have people who are commenting like, oh, for fuck's sake, War Gaming, why not allow this battles for all? At least from tier 3, we want low tier big battles. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that would be pretty fun, I'll be honest with you. And we can actually have low tier games when you can actually get into the game. We can actually seal club at low tiers again. Um, but, yeah, I don't think it'll work too well. Someone said Defender Mark 1, which is an interesting... Interesting pick. It's not a tank that most people are familiar with or like to play, but that's an interesting pick right there. And then there's other people like, is it me or the boosters aren't working? <laughs> Again, this is a subreddit about 10 versus 10 tanks, the best tanks to play, and this guy's talking about boosters. The 1A3, again, an interesting tank to play. I wouldn't suggest playing it. I know it's got big alpha and I said 1A3, but... The problem is with 10 versus 10, people just rush in and they just go head first and they don't have any concept of waiting and... Yeah, I wouldn't recommend playing the 183. Every time I play the 183 on stream in 10 versus 10, I just get absolutely nuked to death. So, perhaps steer away from the 183. And then we got people saying that the 87 is fantastic to play and I, you know what? You you are correct. The AT7 would be very very fun to play in ten versus ten, especially if you've got the ten round clip. So you can just basically hit one shot per tank on the enemy team. That would be pretty hilarious. So yeah, sixty TP is pretty good. So it's this. <laughs> I don't read what this, this this guy said. A sixty TP stealing the spot for TDs and forcing those to fight front line and camp without being able to see any red player, especially if they are in the 183, you may want to platoon with a Kranwagen to F even more than the TDs and occupy their spaces. I was in the 183, the WZ-113 and other tier 10 TDs. I didn't realize the WZ-113 was a TD, but anyway, I think he meant GFT. <laughs> and that was effective to give the win for reds. 10 versus 10 is simply disgusting because it fills your team with three extra tumors. What the flip? <laughs> oh my god. Three extra tumors? I've never in my life ever heard anyone describe. <laughs> oh, this man. I'll tell you what, these videos are really something else. <laughs> okay, and then we got not a camping mouse, that's for sure. 10 versus 10 equals more terrible teammates. <laughs> Oh my god, it's a subreddit about what the best tank is to play at 10 versus 10, and we have all these things. <laughs> and then we have someone who's like, quad shit barn, in it. Quad shit barn has to be it, in it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he's not wrong. And then we got this, this absolute amazing tanker right here, he's just like, a tank. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what was the point of that? Oh, bro. And then we get more people like, you know, the British AT guns, the Grave Digger. Apparently the Grave Digger is pretty good at 10 versus 10, I don't know. Yeah, every time I try to open those bloody Halloween crates and whatnot for the events, I keep getting the bloody Grave Digger. Give me the Smasher for God's sake, or the Hellzing, or the, the, the Drac. Anything but the Grave Digger. Um, and then, then, you know, some people just be like, well, most tanks that are good for 10 versus 7, I major. I mean, yeah. With a caveat that low ammo count tanks will have difficulty carrying a uh, skill-based matchmaking team like the T95V6. Um, yeah, I don't know what you're on about with the skill-based matchmake, skill matchmaking there, buddy, but... Um, yeah, but apparently skill-based matchmaking is still a thing in fun modes. That's probably another video I want to make. I did not know that. Very interesting. That's a whole different subreddit altogether. I'm going to check this out, actually, later on. Um, <laughs> and then we get people who's like, there likely isn't a best tank. It's scaled up normal battles. Play what you normally would. The only thing that should be considered is that light tanks will be less effective because it will be more difficult to hide from enemies. 
I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> Mr. General Honks, you're not wrong, mate. The Emil one is an interesting one. Apparently, the Emil one is pretty good. I'd probably say that Emil 1951, I believe, that's what it's called. I keep forgetting what it is. Um, is pretty good anyway. If you have it, you probably want to run that instead because it is a technically a, a premium tank, I think. I, I hope they haven't changed it to a collector tank. I'd lose my shit. I'm pretty sure it's still a premium, so just use that and just get credits. The Sheridan is another one. Yeah, no. And then someone, <laughs> someone's like, the WT Elf E100. Um, yeah, mate, I just want to inform you. The WT Elf E100 has not been released yet. It's only been in tests. Like, only testers have it, so... I'm going to forget about that. Type 71. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. I like the Type 71. Type 71, for me, it's become so OP, this update. I mean, I'm not going to say it's it's become so OP. It's pretty damn good. It's always been pretty damn good. But I'm not going to say it's pretty damn OP. I mean, it's a bit of a stretch there. But, yeah, Type 71 will be fantastic for this game mode. Um, and then there's others like, I, I got along well with all the T... T10 tiers, uh, T10 tanks, I should probably say, except the AMX 30B and the FV4005. Really? The 4005? Really? I, mate, the 4005s I've been coming up against in bloody 10 versus 10 have just absolutely dominated the game. Like, they have a four round clip, for God's sake. That thing dishes out over 1200 damage. It's ridiculous. Anyway, T100 LT, as I was saying, the T22 medium is a very interesting one. Very interesting one. Um, that is, yeah, I'd probably pay the, T, T, the T22 medium as well, so that's pretty good. And then finally, the hybrid nation tanks is OP, pay to win. <laughs> oh, God, there's always got to be that one person that has to comment that. <laughs> anyway, guys, I think all in all, you could probably tell there are many good tanks that you can play. In the 10 versus 10 battle, if you just want to have fun, you want to win, you're grinding events, you want to grind credits, free XP, you want to grind specific tank lines to get a T10, fair enough. I am not a huge fan of the 10 versus 10. I think there needs to be bigger maps implemented for these game modes. Um, otherwise, it's very interesting to see how it is. And again, Wargaming are just testing it out at this point, so... Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Onwards and upwards. Look after yourselves. Look after your family and stay safe. Uh, uh, should probably rephrase that. Huh, what happened there? And stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.